This is called balanced ternary. And what you do is you write your number in base three, and then you replace all the twos by minus ones. So let's do it. Zero is fixed. One is fixed. Two in base three just says two. And the rule is replace all the twos by minus ones. So this is now minus one. Three in ternary, it's one naught, so it doesn't change. Four is one one in ternary, and it doesn't change. It's still four. Five is one two, which becomes one comma minus one. Now one comma minus one means one three minus one, so it's two. Six is two zero which becomes minus one, zero, which is minus three. Yeah. Let me remind you, we're writing numbers in base three. So it's minus one comma zero sub three, which means minus three plus zero. Zero in the one's position. In the one's position. Okay, yeah. So it's minus three. Seven is two one, which becomes minus one one. So that's minus three plus one, which is minus two, and so on. And if you do this, you get all the integers, both positive and negative, exactly once. It's a way of, in a concise way, of enumerating all the num all the integers. And if you look at the graph, it looks like this. It looks like Star Wars, a scene from Star Wars. Oh, wow. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> look at them, they're all the Star Destroyers. Yeah. yeah. And that graph will eventually, as it expands out, plot every single yeah. integer, negative and positive. Yeah, yeah, they're all there. It just keeps going. Wisteria. So now the sequence is, you take n, you write it in base 10, and you subtract the product of the non-zero digits. One product is one, subtract, we get zero. Two, zero, three, zero. Very boring, up to nine, zero. Because the number minus the product of its digits is zero if there's only one digit. Okay, 10. 10 has one non-zero digit, one. It's product, so subtract it, and we get nine. 11 has, the product is one, so we get 10. 12, product is two, and we get 10. 13, I look at the product of the non-zero digits and subtract it from the number, 10. 14 is 10 again, and well, let's jump forward. By the time we get up to 25, product of digits is 10, so we subtract 10 from 25 and we get 15. So it's drastically changed. 26, subtract 12 from 26 and we get 14, and so on. The graph looks like this. I call it wisteria, because to a gardener, this looks very like wisteria. Hmm. Purple flowers, you see, in the trees. Nice. It's like the droop gets bigger, but it never droops further than... Well, you're not subtracting very much because you're looking at the product of the digits, and that's much less than what you started with, since the digits are all nine or less. So but once you start getting interesting numbers like, you know, 4,692... Yeah. You know, so four times six times nine times two is whatever it is, but it's not very big. So it's not, it doesn't droop very far from what you started with. So they look like some pretty big droops there. Well, yes, they had a lot of big digits. I like that. Yeah, wisteria. So this is the forest fire. And the rule is that we put down the lexicographically earliest sequence, meaning you always pick the smallest numbers. If you have a choice, go small. I'll just do it, that's the easiest way. We start off, when we have a choice, pick the smallest positive number. So, so far, we don't have anything to worry about, so I can pick a one. It's got to be positive. Okay, I can put another one, because it's not a big deal. The rule says you may not have three terms that are in an arithmetic progression, meaning the difference between here and here is the same as the difference between here and here. So a of i plus j minus a of i must not equal a of i plus 2j minus a of i plus j. We've got two ones here. I would like to put a one here because that's the smallest legal move. But then the difference between then these three terms, if we did that, we'd have a one and a one and a one, and they would be equally spaced. That's not allowed. Okay, that's not allowed. They jump by zero each time equally spaced numbers with a constant difference between them. 
It's not allowed. So we go to the next term. There's nothing wrong with putting a 2 there. Okay. Now, what about the next one? Well, I could put a 1 there because there's, there's no conflict. So we put a 1 there. Now, what about here? Could I put a, a 1 there? Yes, I could. I can, and therefore I must. Because there are no three, three ones that are evenly spaced. Yes. Let's go on. You'll see. Now, so the sequence begins. One, one, two, one, one. Now, what can I put here? You should always ask, can I put a one? Can you put a one? You start off. Can I put a one? Can I put a two? We can't put a one because we'd have one, one, one. And that would be a violation of the rule. Constant increment of zero. Three equally spaced terms. Can Not I put, allowed. Can I put a two? I think we can do a two. So we've got 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2. All right, what's the next term? Now, could it be a 1? Well, I think it's going to be a problem if we have a 1, because 1 to 4 to 7, we would have a 1, a jump of 3, and a 1, a jump of 3. That's not allowed. That would be an arithmetic progression. 1, 1, 1 at three terms, which are equally spaced. That can't be a 1. Could it be a 2? Well, yes. Uh, are you sure? It looks like it could be a 2. Yeah. OK, 2. Nothing wrong. OK, what about the next term? Could it be a 1? Well, it can't be a 1 by the same rule, because we'd have 2, 5, 8. That would be a 1, 1, 1. No. Forbidden. Forbidden. Not allowed. So it can't be a 1. Could it be a 2? Well, no, because then we'd have 2, 2, 2. OK, could it be a 3? Well, if it was a 3, now here we see something a little bit more subtle. If this was a 3, we would have 1, 2, 3. Constant difference of 1 at three equally spaced points. No, it can't be a three, but it can be a four. And it keeps going. That's the sequence. It's well defined, it's unique, and it's crazy. It looks like this. Here is a graph of it. It's actually been filtered out a little bit. The picture is very busy. So one of my friends, Sean Gregg, removed some of the, the blackness from it. So it looks like this. This is 100,000 terms. And you notice there's this pattern of smoke which is repeating. It has a fractal structure. And we do not have any explanation for that. You think, wow, this is such an elegant definition. What's going on? No one has analyzed this. What do you mean by no one's analyzed it? What do you want them to find out about it? Like, what would, what would be... Well, you could say, for instance, what we have here is something like the Easter Island heads that get bigger and bigger and bigger, and they're spaced at such and such an interval. There is some regularity. What is it? When is the next blob going to be? How big is the blob? What's going on? So when we first started plotting sequences in the OAIS, or converting them to music, I made two artificial sequences to display this. The music one is Für Elisa, converted to sounds. That's sequence A, one, two, three, four, five, six, if you're interested. To display the graph, I made this sequence. And you say, what on earth? What sequence is this? Well, it's very simple. If you turn it around, it is a famous profile. Head of a Woman in Profile, from the Cleveland Museum of Art. Why'd you pick that one? Because it's... Cause it's a it's... clean line, and it's also a beautiful drawing. And have you found any uh, properties to the num number <laughs> no, sequence? No, or... no. <laughs> It'd be great if you found out it had some <laughs> equation or something. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, then. This is brilliant. I've sponsored today's video. I'm going to go back into this Geometry Fundamentals course. I've been doing it before. I'm doing all right. Let's see what I'm up to here. 27 unit cubes are packed together to create, oh, it's like a Rubik's cube. If all eight of the corner cubes are removed, how much will the surface area of the figure increase? So I'm removing three, and I'm exposing three. I think it will stay the same, won't it? Yes! Oh, yes. Nice. Shall we have a look at what's next? How many of the following nets can fold up into the square pyramid shown above. Look, people, if you want to check out this course or all the other ones on Brilliant, have a look at this. Look at all the courses they've got. Look at them all. Algebra Fundamentals. Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Trigonometry, Pre-Calculus. Also, I will recommend the Daily Challenges. These are always great fun. Power Tower Comparison. 
which of these two expressions is larger? 3 to the 3 to the 3 to the 2, or 2 to the 3 to the 3 to the 3? What do you reckon? I'm going to go that one. Am I right? Anyway, people, go to brilliant.org slash number file. There's loads of stuff on there for free, but if you use that slash number file, you're going to get 20% off a premium membership, and that unlocks all the good stuff, everything on Brilliant you've got access to. Brilliant.org slash number file. Our thanks to them for supporting this episode. This was the second in a small trilogy of videos with Neil about amazing graphs. The third and final one is coming very soon. Pretty obviously is never going to happen if you look at the graph. And by the way, if you haven't checked out the Number File podcast yet, the latest episode of that is also an interview with Neil. Search Number File on your podcast player, or you can watch them here on YouTube on our other channel, Number File 2.